atrium or inner court was the heart of a house. The main area of a building, surrounded by rooms playing auxiliary role to the yard, and where residents would retrieve only during chilly weather, rain, or hiding from unwanted onlookers. Sunny winter days or summer cool day or night, residents would enjoy that in the yard, where they find serenity during winter and shade in summer, which are made by the building itself. There they worked, had fun, and slept in summer. Also, from the rooms, they were enjoying a private view of the yard, which provides unique optical sensation. Simple pleasures such as family meals in the yard, friendly chat under a cool shade of a tree, summer sleep under the glimmer of stars are all an enjoyment of the past not available anymore. However, these simple things make the quality of family life a pleasant neighborhood, and even the whole town function culturally as well as resist the dull reality of our days. During summer, hot air rising naturally from the cobbled roads carries with it from under the main door low, drifting, cool air produced by vine leaves above the yard. Winter court flooded by sunshine like a mirror attracts, concentrates, and intensifies faded sun rays. In a summer evening, weak winds blowing at the eaves is forced to bend around it and flow faster, soaring up, and therefore causing air to glide in the yard. When the night comes, the cobbles are still hot as well as the air above them from the day heat. However, an odd, cool, gentle breeze blows from the yard. Descending chill of the night flows into the rooms while windows and doors of the court remain open. This is facilitated by hot cobbles and funnel-shaped yard alike. Rural houses were built by local constructors without a plan and were designed for the needs of the residents. It provided roof for family life as well as agricultural work of the owners. Its organizational structure reflects centrifugal character of the society. A yard fenced by walls and structures, or less frequently open to the garden, always remained the heart of a house, the main place of residence and work of the people and animals, but also provided access to various parts of the house. Usually, a house consists of two or three stretched structures, pantries, and utility buildings arranged in a row or L-shaped. Position of rooms is shaped by the size of the yard. In a foothill area where houses are built on slopes, the yard is usually narrow and small. Where space is available, the yards are larger, normally square-shaped, and premises are placed in a row or in a U-shaped formation. The yard is fenced by a low stone fence or high brick fences, depending on availability of construction material, knowledge, as well as local traditions. Yard entry is either through the entry door or through the semi-atrium door. Portio or open entrance, usually called iliacos, is a characteristic element of a rural house. It plays a role of a lobby and is usually positioned at a right angle to the road. It leads from the road to the yard, usually through a room. Sometimes it reaches the upper floor too, while the stairs start here. Iliacos is a significant element of a house. This sun-oriented semi-atrium part of a house is open at one end to the yard through one or more rooms or supporting beams, depending on material availability and construction knowledge in the area. Less commonly, one or two of its narrow sides are open. For instance, on a plain and in the Famagusta area, we come across descriptions of Iliacos with up to five rooms, while in the mountainous regions of the island, they usually had just one room. The front run of Iliacos, like the front of the house, may face the yard. In such cases, it may be L-shaped, following the shape of the house. Sometimes the second Iliacos also exists on the upper floor. It also provides access to the joining rooms of the building. Joining room of Iliacos between the house and the yard, open and closed, is the area for work, cooking, rest, as well as social activity of the residents. It also provides cover from sun and rain. One of its narrow sides is usually occupied by a stove or clay oven used for cooking, while opposite you will find a bowl for laundry. Iliakos represents a significant typical and morphological element in the whole building ensemble. At high altitudes, the landscape makes yards a rare occasion, while Iliakos is always there, but at the highest level of a house making a kind of veranda or lodging.
As the yard is very small or does not exist at all, various chores take place in the open or in the iliacos. Very often a weaver's loom is set here because of a better lighting and economy of an already limited inner area of the house. At the same time, one can see the bypassers or chat with the neighbors during work. Grapes and other produce are laid here to dry. Common presence of iliacos and balconies at the outer side in the mountain area houses is a significant distinction from houses in the plain area where privacy is a rule. Transfer from ethnic to civil construction started at the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century almost simultaneously with the end of Turkish rule. Central Iliakos is the entrance from the street, and one or two rooms are symmetrically located at both sides. Despite some minor variations, Iliakos remains the central area of a house. It is also a joining element of the house as it provides access to the adjacent rooms. This is another sitting area of a house. In the past, Iliakos was an open room to the yard, but then it was closed by a door, window, or stonework. When the upper floor of the house with a hall or another room is added, a staircase is also built. The yard does not play a major role anymore in the functional structure of the house while it is given the role of a forecourt. Set symmetry becomes more flexible. Central Iliakos preserves the same characteristics. However, one of the side rooms becomes bigger and functions as a reception area too. Inside the three-sided formation, Central Iliakos continues, however, with more variations and exceptions from the symmetry perspective. One side of Iliakos is separated by glass doors, while in some cases a rear veranda is also reconstructed.